What's up everybody, my name is Sawyer Hartman and today I'm going to try to give you the best filmmaking camera photography tutorial you've ever seen because I'm going to give you my honest five ways to actually get better at photography. These are mistakes almost every single photographer makes, whether they know they're making them or not, how to fix them, and more importantly, their mindset changes in photography. So by the end of this video, you should have an entirely new approach to photography that'll make you more creative, a better shooter, and just an overall better photographer. Roll the intro. Okay, so before we jump into the five techniques to actually get better at photography, let me just say one quick thing. I started photography when I was 10 years old, which means I've almost been shooting photography for 20 years. So a lot of the techniques and skills that I have, I never really intended to learn. I figured them out along the way, and I've just kind of absorbed knowledge from people around me my whole life who were better than me. Now, at least twice a week, one of my friends sits me down and asks me how they can get better at photography, and what I'm gonna tell you in this video is exactly what I tell them. You don't need better gear, you don't need a better location, you just need some fundamental mindset shifts on how to approach photography. That's what I'm gonna try to do in this video. I'm sorry if it's all over the place, I'm all over the place, but I really, really hope it helps. So, tip number one is your photos are entirely too busy. Take a look at these two photos on the screen. Notice how everything's really sharp, everything's really vibrant, but there's a problem here because your eye is not drawn to what the viewer is supposed to be looking at. Now, on the opposite side, look at these photos that are really simple, really clean, and very minimal. Now, you might be asking yourself, what makes a photograph busy and what makes a photograph simple? In a busy photograph, your eye has a very hard time locating what's important in the photograph and keeping its attention there. You can see in a photo like this, which is a beautiful location, there's too much going on. There's someone in the background, there's all this scaffolding, and there's a girl. Your eye kind of bounces around the image until it's just a little tired of looking at it. Now, on the opposite side of the spectrum, photos like these are very easy to look at because when you show them to someone, your eye goes straight to what they're supposed to be looking at and it stays there. Another simple technique is using a single color background and then letting your subject be a little splash of a new color so that your eye goes directly to them. A really simple way to think about it is make your photos like an Apple store. Anything that doesn't have a purpose and doesn't serve some kind of information for your photograph, get it out of there. Try to simplify your images so that every single thing in the image needs to be there to help tell the story and you're on your way to simplifying your photographs. Tip number two actually comes from one of my friends, Jared Pollan or Fro Nose Photos, and he made a really good point. You need to train your eye to start focusing on actions. If you look at the very famous photos from history, they're always mid-action. It's someone kissing a girl, or waving at a crowd, or pointing at someone. It's always these moments, these actions, these things that they're doing. They're never just sitting still unless it's just a portrait. Jared actually used a perfect example. If you're a press photographer and you're taking photos of the president and he's just sitting there listening to someone talk, you're not taking photos. But the moment he goes to shake someone's hand or pick up a pen to write something or exclaim that someone's wrong, all of the cameras in the room start firing. Now there's a reason for this. It's not that the photo of him sitting there wasn't a great photograph, but it is because without action, your photo doesn't really tell a story. People will remember that action from your photograph, it becomes a memory, and then all of a sudden, your photograph is memorable. You just wanna always have the camera ready don't shoot and just wait for them to do the action, to smile, to laugh, to look up at you. And as soon as they do it, click the shutter and you're actually now capturing moments, memories, and actions rather than just photographs of the people around you. Tip number three actually changed everything for me and it's something that I actually need to get a lot better about doing myself and it's bring props with you when you're taking photos. How many times have you went to take a photo of someone and you didn't know what you wanted them to do? They're just standing there going, what should I do? And you're like, uh, I'm not really sure. If you had props with you, this would not have happened. To define props, what I'm talking about is like these quirky, weird little items that people have in photographs that just make the photo feel interesting. It breathes new life into an otherwise normal photograph. 
Firstly, by using props, you're giving your subject something that they don't have to feel uncomfortable with. You're actually giving them a doing or an action. You should think of props as like the little variables in your photograph that you can play with, you can get creative with. Just take some of these images for example, like this one of a girl with records, or this one of a girl with a camera, or this other one of a girl with a camera. If you take those props out of the photo, the photo loses some of its personality, it loses some of its quirkiness and the things that originally attracted you to the photographs. Props have this incredible ability to make photos feel real. And in all honesty, to me, the props are what make a photo memorable. Take this photo of Leonardo DiCaprio with a swan around his neck. The swan is the prop, and this is probably one of the most recognizable photos of Leonardo DiCaprio that's ever been taken. Why? Because he's got a freaking swan around his neck. Tip number four is you need to start putting things in between you and the subject you're taking a photo of because it gives your photos depth and it makes your photos more interesting. This is something you need to be doing in your work. If you're not currently doing it, it will change everything for you. Now, there's tons of ways you can do this. You can use something like a leaf and create a cool framing. I used palm trees. I used parts of logs that I was shooting in front of. Like, check out this shot of a girl on a train. It's not just a girl on a train. It's a girl on a train shot from outside the train with people in front of her and glass reflection. There are so many cool elements in between the girl on the train and you that it sets the stage and creates a scene. A lot of times these subtle framings and foreground elements can give information to your audience of what's going on in the photograph. You've seen this technique used so many times on the best photos on Instagram, but maybe your mind didn't quite pick up on what they were doing. Whether you're just holding your phone under the lens to create a really cool kind of effect, or you're actually creating framings with the location of where you are, you want to be including this in your photographs every single time. But this is an actual skill set that you learn, and the more you use it, the more you get better at it, and that's how you create photos people haven't seen before. This is the most important tip from the video. Please put it into use the next time you go shooting, and it'll take your photography from here to like way up here out of frame that you can't even see. I swear to you, it'll be night and day difference. Just give it a shot. Tip number five is an actual exercise to teach you how to tell a story with photographs. The idea behind that is once you can tell a story with photographs, you can start trying to tell a story with one photograph. But a lot of people try to tell a whole story with one photograph before they're even able to tell a story with multiple photographs. So we have to take a step back and do this exercise. Your goal is to go on a little adventure and try to tell the whole story of that adventure in maybe five to 10 photographs. Now all five to 10 of those photographs might not be worthy of putting on Instagram, but they all need to give information about your story. So we'll use Angelique's birthday as a perfect example. So for her birthday, I'm taking her on a wine tasting tour in Malibu, and I'm pretty sure they have giraffes there. So if I was trying to tell this story with five to 10 photographs, here's what it might look like. I'd probably get a photo of me and Angelique at home before we've ever left to go on this Malibu wine tasting, and it would be awesome if I could put one element of something in there that makes you know it's her birthday. This is the beginning of our story. The second photograph would most likely be us in the car driving to this experience in Malibu, or maybe somewhere we stopped along the way. The third photo could just be the sign of the wine tasting tour we're actually going on. The next photo could be us actually on the tour, maybe getting our first glass of wine. The next photo could be us with the giraffes or enjoying the wine in each other's company and just showing what our day actually looks like on the tour. Maybe the next photo is Angelique a little tipsy after the tour. You can see how the photos we've chosen to shoot and to show actually start to create the arc of what the day looked like. This is the first step in being able to tell a story with multiple images. And once you get really good at this skill set, then you can start telling stories with one individual photograph. I promise you, once you get good at this, your photos will take on an entirely new life of their own. And well guys, that is it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed and learned something. These are my five tips to actually get better at photography. Share this video with a friend if you know someone who's trying to get better at photography. There are little mindset changes, little approaches to photography that can change everything for you if you're not currently using them. If you did enjoy this video and want to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, I make new film and photography related videos every single Sunday. I'm going to ramp up and do even better in May. 
And other than that, I love you guys very much. I hope you're enjoying your day. And remember, stay motivated, stay inspired, and never stop creating. And I'll see you beautiful people next Sunday. Peace.